Tom, we understand that you are retiring from active participation on the board of the Network of Biblical Storytellers, a community that you helped start many years ago. Though we know the journey has not always been smooth, um, but it has been filled with much joy and many friends. And a few of us had joined together to share some reflections, both about your story and to simply say thank you. First, there was Adam Bartholomew, who was with Tom at New York Seminary, who remembers, sort of, a big dreamer who imagined teaching others about telling the stories of the Bible. Was it White Plains or Hartsdale? Well, probably White Plains. Fine spring day, I may have been sitting on a folding chair too, and Tom's point was, I am dreaming of a network of biblical storytellers that would spread throughout the world in order to tell the gospel story of Jesus Christ, or something like that. Time was always dreaming big, and I could hardly imagine that this could happen. He was teaching at New York Theological Seminary in the city, easily accessible by train from White Plains, or was it Hartsdale? Probably White Plains. He had started inviting students to story learning workshops. The first chapter, or guild, or whatever we called them at that time. As I say, Tom was dreaming big, and I could hardly imagine that this could happen. But as Rogers and Hammerstein said, or was it Gilbert and Sullivan, probably Rogers and Hammerstein, you've got to have a dream. If you don't have a dream, how are you going to make a dream come true? Do we have to pay a royalty for saying that? From this early beginning, Tom began to teach workshops and classes on biblical storytelling. Richard Rice attended one of these classes, even while Tom was still working on his dissertation, The Passion and Resurrection Narrative for Mark. The three-person class learned together, you guessed it, The Passion and Resurrection Narrative from Mark. In the early days of the network, he gave me the complete support and undergirded me in my leadership of the board. It also means that I've known Tom longer than almost all that have gathered here today. And I'm thankful for following his command in that first class when he said, tell the story. Eventually, there were enough people excited by biblical storytelling to hold the first festival gathering. Well, gathering, a thousand people. We need to fill this place. Among those who attended were a young couple, Richard and Elaine Davies, who were invited by Gary Venzel. They made the trek to Biddeford Pool, Maine to attend this huge freewheeling event, which they describe as something of, of a three ring circus. Particularly memorable was Tom telling the gospel according to Mark solo. We didn't know it at the time, but this would be the first epic telling. It would set up a significant NBS tradition. What we did know that night was that we had heard something breathtaking, enlightening, and important. Tom always has been driven by Jesus' teachings on peace. Jesus is the Messiah of peace. In the 1980s, that passion led him to imagine a storytelling event in Russia. Weldon nicely shared that vision with Tom. In 1988, a biblical storytelling adventure to Russia became a reality. The first biblical storytelling trip was to Russia in August 1988, led by Tom and me. We shared stories with Baptists in Moscow, Lutherans in Riga, uh, Methodists in Holland and Orthodox in Leningrad. We even told spontaneous stories on the streets. We encountered the power of stories told across church, country, and cultural boundaries. Without Tom's joyful vision and leadership, the biblical storytelling for Journey for Peace would never have come to fruition. 
From the moment we first met, Tom's passion for the biblical story revealed in Jesus as the Messiah of peace has been profoundly formative for me. Tom is the great encourager, inspiring me to follow Jesus in the way of peace. After the trip to Russia, Tom had a vision of teaching about biblical storytelling throughout the world. Though many members had received invitations to tell in different countries, the network's first organized global mission would be to the Gambia. The network of biblical storytellers' mission to the Gambia began with an address by Tom Boomershine calling for NBS to expand its teaching throughout the world. Sitting in the audience was longtime member Juliana Rowe, who felt called to introduce biblical storytelling to her native home in Sierra Leone. The word has gone to South Africa. They have a guilt there. Why not West Africa? After two trips to the Gambia, there would be trips to Cameroon, the Philippines, Haiti, and India. That you learn my heart and tell to another person, a child, to a small group in your home. Tom would become a professor at United Theological Seminary in Dayton, Ohio, and launch the first Doctor of Ministry program in biblical storytelling in 1989. Jacob Golden saw it advertised in a Methodist newspaper and said, Hey, I like stories, and called the number. He said, I spoke to a very serious man with a not-so-serious name, Boomer Shine. In less than two months, I was in Dayton, part of the first biblical storytelling D-men group. To be honest, I had no idea, really, of what I had gotten myself into. It, in a lot of ways, it was it was like an adventure. It was like it was like going on a lion hunt. It was a, a an academic program far more demanding than anything I had done at Duke Divinity School 15 years earlier. But much more importantly, there was this just a little bit wild fellow with the strange name often sitting on the back of a folding chair who with boundless energy, infectious and sometimes bewildering enthusiasm and at breakneck speed was synthesizing this mountain of material and adding his own measure of magic to the mix through it all by word and by example, Tom Moomershine was teaching us how to know the story, to love the story, and most of all, to trust the biblical story. Some storytelling seeds take time to germinate. Dennis Dewey had the biblical storytelling seed planted by Tom in 1981. Dennis had already presented Mark's passion as a dramatic monologue, but under Tom's tutelage, came to understand it as the art of storytelling. By 1992, Dennis was sensing a change of call from the pastorate. That's when the seeds that Tom Boomershine planted really began to bear fruit. Could I really take a whole year off while I look for a real job? and become a full-time biblical storyteller? Only one way to find out. Road trip, pilgrimage, a hajj to the Mecca of biblical storytelling, Tom Boomershine's Dayton. It was a, a long, hot ride in a Volkswagen with no air conditioning that July, but it was well worth it for the three words of encouragement that Tom spoke to me. Great! Do it! Tom, indeed, was a man ahead of his time. Like most prophets, he could read the writing on the wall and often was treated like many of the prophets of old. He saw the coming influence of digital technology and tried to get the church and academia to listen. They didn't. Yet he persisted. We cannot any longer assume that continuing to do what we've done in the past will have the same meaning and effect in relation to the communication of the gospel 
the embodying of the presence of Christ in this new cultural environment. He wrote Story Journey and began the Bible in Ancient and Modern Media, or BAM, as a subgroup of the Society of Biblical Literature. But perhaps his greatest influence was on individuals. Twenty-seven years ago, when I was a mere child, I was introduced to the network of biblical storytellers. And I haven't been the same since. <laughs> my life, my vocation, my spirit have all been massively impacted by this crazy organization and this crazy organization's even crazier founder. I would not be the person, the teacher, or the teller that I am today had it not been for our very own modern day prophet, Tom Boomershine. So lucky for you, Tom, that I happen to love what I'm doing and feel like I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Lucky for me too. So I guess what I'm saying is I am deeply grateful for you, Tom. And I'm even grateful that I um, drank the Kool-Aid. In 2002, Tom was so devoted to biblical storytelling in the emerging digital culture that he left United Seminary and started Lumicon with Amelia Cooper Boomershine and two upstart digital graphic designers, Len Wilson and Jason Moore from the Binghamsburg Methodist Church. At Lumicon, they produced integrated graphics and videos for churches to use in worship but they also held the Lumicon Institute to encourage the digital reformation of the church. Beth Galbraith was a part of that first institute. But Tom had an even bigger dream, a training program in digital culture and the kind of ministry needed in the 21st century. It launched in 2002 with about 40 participants and it was intense. Only four of us completed it that year. It opened my mind and my heart and launched me into seminary and a ministry serving God's people with technology and story. The next year, its last year, Tom trusted me to help teach the online segments. And that's what I still do today, teaching biblical storytelling and more online at BeADisciple.com. In introducing the Institute, Tom told us, if you complete the program, you will receive a certificate. This certificate gets you absolutely nothing, but it is a very cool certificate. Indeed it is, and it hangs right next to my ordination certificate. Thank you, Tom, for being my inspiration, my teacher, and my mentor. Over a decade ago, Tom and Dennis Dewey had the wonderful idea of getting highly trained storytellers and biblical performance scholars to interact with each other in an intentional way. The NBS seminar meets each year for a few days before the festival gathering, with scholars and storytellers wrestling with God's word and fleshed in a way that has been most generative. Tom hoped the, the NBS seminar would, would take over the academy and put in place a new paradigm of biblical studies. While this hasn't happened yet in the fullness that Tom hoped for, the number of books and scholarly presentations and deepened performances that have come out of the seminar's work is phenomenal. This shelf behind me is full of the evidence of that. We have benefited so much from the wisdom gained in interacting with each other. There is so much more that could have been included in this video, like uh, by heart groups and telling in prisons and the thousands of people like me whom you've inspired. So on behalf of all of us, let me simply say thank you. And immediately he got up and he rolled up his pallet and he walked out in front of them all so that they were all amazed and began to glorify God saying, whoa, we never seen anything like this.